Hey all, here OS Reviews. About half a year ago, we did a revisited review on the Google Pixel 3 XL, and I described it as an excellent value back then, even when the phone was still running on Android 11. Well, a few months later, here in 2022, the device is running on the latest version of Android, which is Android 12, and I thought it would be nice to maybe revisit now as this device nears almost four years since its initial debut in 2018. One of the benefits of a stock Pixel phone, just like getting an iPhone is you do have a lot more software longevity to the form of updates than many third-party manufacturers. Many devices which are contemporaries would have remained stuck on Android 11, if not even before then, stopped receiving updates. With that being said, Android 12 will be the last official OS that Google will push over to the Pixel 3. So going forwards into, let's say, 2023 and beyond, we don't really expect this to receive the newest Android 13. So if you want to further update upgrade beyond this point, you may have to look to community ROMs, which are plentiful as part of the Pixel community, but this is kind of where that cutoff stops. Everything is still really animated, colorful, almost cute in its emotive way of expressing the widgets as well as icons, colors which are dynamically shifted depending on the background, wallpaper that you choose is also just really fun touch. From a UI perspective, it's one of the biggest overhauls that we've seen from Android OS yet, so it's great to see it here on the Pixel, and with the Pixel 3 in particular, I would say performance has also held up quite well. When it comes to general usage, I'm not seeing too much lags or slowdowns. With that being said, with of course the newest flagships out there with the 888, or 8th Gen 1, you're bound to see even less lag and everything just becoming even smoother in terms of frame rates as well as response times. But honestly, on the 845, which was a flagship chipset from yesteryear, it's still doing very well. Now, if you are considering the Pixel 3 XL here in 2022, of course, price would be one of the primary motivators. You can easily find one of these things for under 100 bucks, sometimes as low as $50 if you shop around, which is definitely an incredible deal in my opinion, just because of really everything on here still performing as well as any smartphone that you would want. The 6.3 inch OLED panel still packs impressive looking colors. It is a 2K resolution, so the overall accuracy as well as the sharpness are both top notch, and we also get very pleasant looking blacks as well if you're taking a look at darker images and themes. Like we said during our revisited review at the time, the most controversial design decision of the Pixel 3 XL is undoubtedly with the notch, which is notoriously wide. It houses the earpiece along with a primary camera and also a wide angle front facing cam, which is actually very useful. If you don't like this look, a simple click away will allow us to access the ability to hide the display cutoff and voila, we're presented with almost a symmetrical design since the OLED display is truly dark, even though my personal preference is just leaving it on. So like we said in our first look of Android 12, there's a lot of other neat small details with Within this newest version of Android that you appreciate once you start using the device. For example, some custom animations like when you turn the display off, it kind of slowly fades into the power button, a very nice subtle touch. Of course, with an OLED screen, we do have a always on display mode that will tell you your time, weather, and notifications. And the display here does also have tap to wake. So for instance, if I want to double tap again, I can slowly light it up depending on where I am tapping. Other elements of the hardware I think have held up quite well. It's protected by Corning Gorilla Glass, both on the front as well as on the rear, using the slightly frosted texture on the back panel instead of being made out of aluminum or alloy. Now, because it is a glass sandwich, it's a little bit fragile, but it's nothing that a case can't solve, and more importantly, introduces wireless Qi charging to the Pixel phones for the first time. We did still have a physical fingerprint scanner on the back instead of an in-display sensor, but it made the overall unlocking experience quite fast and responsive, and the back of course also houses the 12 megapixel autofocus camera with LED flash. So although you won't find extras here, including a telescopic lens or a wide-angle lens, Overall, the single camera here still produces excellent looking results thanks to computational photography, the front-facing stereo speakers, that's also the use of the front earpiece that dubs as a second speaker, which is quite convenient for playing back music, 
RAM at four gigabytes, I would say is maybe the only part that is a little bit low, to be honest. Even back in 2018, when the phone was being released, many of its contemporaries started to come with a little bit more. It's definitely not crippling. In fact, everything still runs and renders quite well on this device, but you might need to just be a little more conscious as far as multitasking is concerned. If you're opening up a lot of heavy apps, I haven't really encountered too much slowdowns or dropped frames compared to my experience with the phone on Android 11, thankfully. With that being said, I have noticed that Android 12 seems to be a little bit more of an energy hog. It's not always a dramatic difference, but sometimes I would have to reach for the charger around 30 minutes to an hour earlier than what I had to on the previous version of the OS. And part of that could be just due to the stability. Certain things are still being kind of fixed and updated behind the scenes and the phone is still optimizing, but that argument is also in a way maybe not the best one because like I said, the phone has been running on this OS now for the past three months or so. Uh, so overall, I would say the kind of calibration period sort of ended by now and this is kind of the level of performance that we're seeing. Overall, I'm still able to get a full days of usage out of this device, and that is with some video streaming, watching back different clips on YouTube, checking out the news, obviously making phone calls and texts, so it's more than sufficient for my needs. So anyways, the drag down notification panel, like we said, now consists of all these pill-like icons for adjusting various notifications. Now the one thing that I think a lot of folks have voiced that they would like to see Google change about the apps here would be Wi-Fi access toggle, where right now if you want to turn it on or off, it's kind of a two-step process versus on Android 11, it only takes one click to turn it on or off. But right now if I click on this once, it will actually pop over another panel here. So instead of doing that, I almost wish that they could have activated advanced settings by long holding and instead tapping once to turn it on or off. But instead, it always gives you this pop up that takes two steps to trigger. And that's just one of the smaller, more inelegant parts of the OS that I do hope can be refined, fingers crossed, in the future. Otherwise, all the other widgets, again, are triggered as you would expect. And like we said from before, there are a few new additions on the OS, which allows us to see if we're using certain features like the camera and microphone, which are very handy security functions. So for instance, if I jump into the camera here, you'll see a small pill icon there display and basically indicate that we are accessing the camera. And if I wanted to turn off the camera access for privacy reasons, it will shut off the sensor and prevent any app from accessing the camera. I do feel like with Android 12 and its widgets bode a little bit better if you have a wall paper that also is a little bit more animated or cartoon-like. It just fits the overall vibe of the OS a bit more. The experience feels pretty cohesive, especially as Google has pushed additional software updates over the past few months or so. So now even if we jump into certain features, like let's say the clock, you can see that animation, which is pretty rounded off at the edges, all the icons, which are really using that same uh, design language with the oversized clock as well as these small little details that uh, just makes things feel a little bit more neat and attractive. Same thing goes with other tools such as even the calculator. The colors of the keys as you can see there have been tuned to the dominant colors of our wallpaper. So right now it's identified this as a softer almost a pink like glow. With that being said that level of attention to detail with the UI consistency really is only guaranteed on the built-in Android apps. So things like those utility tools, anything from Google themselves will obviously have the same pattern. Even the colors of the icons there will change. But if you're looking for third-party games and content, of course, those icons really won't be affected by the same level of customization. It retains all the features of the Pixel 3 XL, including, let's say, live captions, which allows you to play back live subtitles regardless of what content you're watching. So it's trying to do this via machine learning automatically on the phone itself. Other features like the ability for it to detect music around you and tell you what the name of the song is on the home screen as it's on the ambient mode is yet another feature that you can try out along with Edge Sense. Similar to Force Touch on iPhones, this is sadly a feature that is no longer present on the latest Pixels, but it was on this 3XL and you can kind of squeeze the edge of the phone as you can see there depending on how hard you're pressing, activate certain features when it comes to loading up, playing music, watching back YouTube clips, Netflix, it all works really well. Everything still is quite immersive, like I said, thanks to the 2K resolution of the OLED panel, and it does pack in quite good sounding speakers. 
The same can be described of the web browsing experience. Although, again, keep in mind the four gigabytes of built-in RAM. So in terms of multitasking, uh, you can't necessarily open up a million tabs, maybe a few moments of additional hesitation as it's rendering things. Not gonna be as lightning quick as, again, a latest flagship. But again, the 845 is still a very good processor, I have to say. Even with complex pages like this, it has lots of ads and video elements. You can see how there's not too much stuttering going down with strong antenna reception quality when I tried it with AT&T and T-Mobile here in the US. As aforementioned, the overall camera quality remains excellent. It may not have the sharpest megapixel count anymore, and it's not the most versatile camera in the sense that, again, we're missing some of the telephoto wide angle effects, which are admittedly useful. However, as far as primary cameras are concerned, I would say this is still excellent. Vibrancy and the HDR effects can really just make a photo that much more special. And it's a very consistent camera at that. It's very easy to use to point and shoot pretty much nine out of 10 times you're bound to end up with a photo that is just something you want to treasure. And that's also thanks to the dedicated neuro processing core allows the camera to snap those images very quickly and you don't have to really wait between the shots that you're taking. So for instance, we can jump into there right away, instantly begin shooting along and we are just fine. Now, one thing I will say though is uh, the overall built-in memory of the Pixel 3 XL, I would say might not be the largest in the world. And unfortunately there is no micro SD card to expand on the built-in memory. That means in terms of default options, you have 64 or 128 gigs. So be sure to pick carefully. I would actually lean towards the 128 gig version these days. With that being said, one advantage of the Pixel 3 XL is you have unlimited storage to Google Photos in the storage saver quality mode. So you can see here it's free and unlimited. So it's not gonna be quite to the same original resolution, slightly compressed, but also means that you can take as many images as you want. It will back up to your own cloud drive, not take up any extra storage, and you can clear up the memory as it fills up with your own media content. Which really speaking of, I would say that the gaming experience, like we said a few months back, is decent. Sure, you may not get instantaneous loading speeds and things may take just a few seconds longer for them to render and during extended gameplay i would say the back portion of the phone does get slightly warm but never too hot to become uncomfortable performance remains pretty consistent without too many drop frames once the games do start to load and play back thanks to the excellent speakers and the oled screen it still remains a very comfortable experience i have to say so here's sky which is overall one of the more i would say graphically demanding games available on the play store a lot of 3d animations it looks beautiful it should more than meet most folks expectations as long as you aren't comparing it directly with the latest gen flagships still is doing much better than I think many folks would expect. So that's more or less it as far as our hands-on review of the Google Pixel 3 XL revisited once again here in 2022. Overall, it hasn't been that long since we last checked out this device, so it's no surprise that it remains still a great choice as a budget option. Even the price has come down a little bit more, plus the overall OS has become even more stable. Android 12 has gone through a little bit of touches here and there to make the widgets animations feel even more complete and I'm still not seeing too big of a drop in performance in terms of fluidity. I do see a tiny bit of drop in battery life but overall I would say it's still a good trade-off considering the nice touches, extra software features, security updates that you're getting here and remains a very compelling phone I have to say now as a budget option if you're looking for just a device but you don't want to spend that much. This is a solid choice with a good camera, really nice build quality, good display, as well as just solid all around usage, whether it's for entertainment, web browsing, or for watching videos. For now, that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews.